if you would believe, as, uh, as the flying saucer cultists would have us believe, that uh, the, the majority of the saucer reports are due to visitations, then you have a very strange situation. Punching low with disparaging language, Sagan has erected a doozy of a weak, loaded straw man. Air Force Project Blue Book Special Report 14 had been public for over a decade since October 1955. Instead of addressing the stunning details therein, Sagan has chosen to beat on fabricated cultist clowns from the 60s, man, who supposedly believe that the majority of UFO sighting reports are visitations. That means several spaceships are coming to the Earth over interstellar distances every day, as if all the anthropologists in the world were to converge on one of the, the Andaman Islands in the Indian Ocean uh, because they just invented the fishnet there or something. In 1966, Sagan is mocking the idea of multiple visitations in one day, despite NASA's 1963 conclusion that the Apollo Command Service Module would serve as a human mothership to deploy and retrieve lunar excursion modules in orbit. Was the avowed advocate for robotic exploration of the cosmos really so dull at this time? Or was the ridicule disingenuous and designed to slip ideas past Harvard University's critical old guard? Uh, I think it's uh, much more reasonable if you, uh, if you want to speculate on the possibility of, of extraterrestrial intelligence that uh, there are very rare visits from extraterrestrials to the Earth. There's no evidence for this. I just say that's not implausible. But to have several visits a day, I think, is straining credulity. Why do you waste your time reading this junk? It's not junk, Fred. Scientists are working on these things right now. What is science fiction today may be science fact tomorrow. You mean we're going to jump into our space saucers and take off for a weekend? <laughs> Flintstone. When you laugh, you show not only your tonsils, but your ignorance. Everything Barney said is true. In fact, that book doesn't begin to describe the wonders of the future. There's no use talking to you, Flintstone. You're a man completely devoid of imagination. Gosh, Gazoo, that's really not fair. Carl Sagan demonstrated his Harvard throttled imagination for National Geographic in December 1967, the year before he was denied tenure at the Ivy League University. Perhaps you are offended by his portrayal of an alien from the Jello fruit salad species, one who finds his way in the daytime by his little red tendrils and who at night digs a hole? Well, you may have a point, Gazoo. Harvard's error was to Cornell's benefit, as well as Johnny Mac and Avi Loeb.